Hello YouTube, this is Weekend Railroader once again, giving you an update on my little HO scale cable car setup. I don't know if anyone's done this before, but I've made a uh, HO cable car that runs by means of a cable. I'll show you how this one works. First of all, let's take a look at the track. The main base for this is this piece of particle board which is actually part of an old drawer that we had. It was part of a you know, small drawer chest and it fell apart because of course it was particle board. But the uh, groove here, this groove is where the track would, where the drawer would slide into the chest on the little metal bar mounted inside the chest. I found out um, the, the gap between the, the gap in the groove was the per basically perfectly HO gauge. So I mounted rails, extra rails I had on either side of the gap with some glue, and I found that the little car could run back and forth just fine. So here we have a cable car. This is one of those cheap little unpowered cable cars you'll find at any train show or any old box of trains. It's usually paired with a uh, green unpowered streetcar um, that says Desire Street on it. This is a San Francisco cable car, though I suppose you could repaint it into any other cable car company scheme. For power at the end of the track, we have a 1990s cassette auto reversing Walkman. You can find one of these in any of your uh, small electronics bargain bins at your local thrift store. The way this works is we still have all the tape wound around the uh, the two hubs on the in the cassette, but at each end, hard to see there. The tape usually in the cassette, the tape comes around, turns to the left or right here, and then comes out, or actually doesn't come out. It goes straight across, so we can play it through the playback head. No tape is running across the playback head here. We don't need to do that. Instead, we have the tape. I cut a couple notches in the cassette, so the tape comes off the hub past the little roller wheel there and comes straight out on both sides. What the tape does then is it come, one comes through here through the groove and is attached currently with a piece of masking tape to the bottom of the cable car. Like so. Tape runs through the groove and into another cassette at the end. It's helpful to have the kind of cassette which has the little Phillips screws instead of the ones that are glued together. So get a, get a blank tape instead of a uh, concert tape. Here's one that is a commercially sold concert tape, Tears for Fears of course, um, and there's no screws. This one does have screws. What I've done here is I've removed the hubs, remove the reels on here inside the cassette and the tape actually runs I, again, I've cut that notch there. For example, I've cut out this section right here. This piece of plastic is gone now on both sides of these two cassettes. So the tape runs in, and I now have it di routed directly around here, past the wheel on the other side, past the little hub there, and it comes out again on this side. So tape comes off, runs along here, runs through here, runs back under, and back onto the other side. Just a very simple tape return. So basically a very long route for a short piece of tape. Now what happens is we have bumpers at either end. Here we have a nail and a push pin. Here we have another push pin. What happens is the cable car makes its journey because it is currently attached to the cassette tape and it hits one of these bumpers. This is an auto-reversing cassette deck or cassette Walkman. That's the important part. Auto-reversing cassettes, when they reach the end of the tape and the wheels couldn't turn anymore because there was no more tape, would automatically flip the motor's polarity and, or at least the drive mechanism and pull the tape the other direction. That's what we need here. So when it hits the end here, the pull becomes too great and it flips the direction. So instead of the tape coming this way and then feeding back, hits the end, it feeds the other way, 
which pulls the car back the other direction. You'll notice that it does go slower coming this way than it does going back. That's just because when it's going that way, this reel is pulling, and when it comes back, that reel is pulling. So that has a, it's a little bit closer to the car one on the way back, the one that's pulling, so it's easier. When this when it's going this way, this reel has to pull, which means it has a little bit farther to go and a little bit more friction along the way. So still not that much difference. Plus some new batteries, uh, it just runs on two double A's, would probably help. So that's how the little cable car runs. Just take the piece of road. It's actually a piece of thick cardstock. You could use styrene or anything else too. And eventually what I'm going to do is I'm going to build a backdrop for this right about here. I'm going to build uh, a nice detailed road. I'll also probably build in a little bit of styrene, some styrene walls here and here and add a little bit of road in between so we get a more realistic cable slot instead of this huge gap in the roadway. So the important thing is though to have a nice clear smooth run for the cassette tape because again if the pole is too great um, the rails are too bumpy or if the uh, tape hangs up somewhere it will reverse direction again. Again, you know, the motor's not too strong. I can just have the car bump my hand and it'll go back the other direction within a second. So that's about it. I guess I'll talk to you later. Hopefully update you when I've got some scenery done on this. See you later.